Hey guys, welcome back to Lima Bean Living. In today's video, we are getting ready for vacation. I did not want to leave my house a mess, so we're definitely gonna be doing some cleaning. And I had a bunch of random food that I didn't want to go bad. We were gonna be only gone for like four or five days, so it's not a huge vacation, but it's long enough where I felt like what we had was maybe not going to last. So we are starting off by just tidying up the family room area. I had the kids playing with rice and cups and stuff, so they made a mess. This is actually the day before we leave, and our flight was going to be a red eye. I did try my best to film as much of our vacation as possible, so that will be another video, so stay tuned for that. However, there was so much that I filmed, it may take me a while to edit, so it may not be the next video because I have something else to share with you for that one. So anyways, we were going to be taking a red eye on a Thursday night. So this is Wednesday. I'm just tidying up, trying to clean up as much as possible, and my hope was that I would clean up most of the mess on Wednesday. And then Thursday, when the kids were up, I think they were probably napping at this point. On Thursday, I was going to try to take them out of the house so that the house would stay as clean as possible up until we leave for our trip. So that was kind of, you know, what I was tackling here. Um, it's kind of nice. I don't know if you notice but like my laundry machine is almost full of clothes and I'm just putting the last couple things in and I have found that with our smaller house one story it's kind of easier just to when you're done with clothes instead of putting it in a hamper you just go and put it in the laundry room and then once the machine gets filled up I start a load. Now this may not be the best for our clothes but it works for us right now and I will continue to do that. I had to go collect some of our eggs. I will have to collect some the following day, but I don't think I filmed it. And we came home to, I think, like 14 eggs, which was kind of cool. Uh, only one of them, I think, got broken, probably because the shell was a little thin, but, you know, not too bad. And then just kind of going to show how my mind works throughout the day, I was putting the eggs away, and then I was like, wow, we got a lot of dirty dishes, so let's go ahead and I wanted to put those in the dishwasher, but our dishes in the dishwasher were clean. So it was time to put those away before putting the dirty ones in the dishwasher so I could start a load later in the evening. And then the next thing that I will be doing is actually putting up some 4th of July decorations. I don't really know when everyone decorates for 4th of July. This is just something that I picked up at Dollar Tree. I thought it was pretty. And this isn't necessarily something that needs to happen before vacation, but I did think it would be fun to come home and have it kind of decorated and feeling a little bit more festive. So that's why I'm doing that in this video here. But like I said, I don't really know like when should we decorate for 4th of July because it's not July yet. And this is kind of just my, my problem in general when it comes to decorating for especially religious holidays. I don't want to start celebrating too early because there's usually a period of preparation for the holiday. But when it comes to 4th of July, I kind of feel like the earlier you do it, it's okay. It's not a big deal. And that just kind of tends to be a, a summery decoration anyways, instead of maybe lemons and other summery things. But while I was at the windowsill, it has been on my to-do list for a very long time to wipe this down, clean it up. It's been very, it was really dirty. I have a lot of plants that like I try to start as seeds and not all of them survive, but they stay on our windowsill. I have like lentils sprouting usually there for the chickens and it just gets really messy. So it was way overdue to be vacuumed up and wiped down and also have the window cleaned as well. Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Where'd you go? Let me 
The one thing I wish was easier to do, at least maybe it's easy, but I just haven't figured it out yet because I haven't been shown how to do it. I'm a very visual person. So if someone just tells me what to do, it's really hard for me to commit it to memory or feel comfortable with the thing. But I wish I could have like easily taken off the screen from this right side of the window and cleaned the opposite side of the actual window here. It was, you know, it probably could be hosed down if anything, but that's like my one regret. I'm sure it's really simple, but I don't want to break anything. And it's just easier for me if someone shows me how to do something first and then I'll take care of it in the future. But anyways, aside from that one window side not getting done, this whole area looks and feels a whole lot cleaner. We're also going to be wiping down my orchid. I'm so proud of myself for keeping this alive. I don't really think of myself as having a green thumb, but I've been following the instructions and the thing said like give three ice cubes every like once a week. So every Sunday I put three ice cubes in and it has bloomed again and I'm happy about that. This little snail is actually from our garden party. It was a game and it was just a hit and I just love this thing. So, you know, make sure to check out that video. I'll link it above if you haven't already. It was a very fun party. And then the pumpkin stem was the first pumpkin we ever grew in our backyard. I was very proud of that. And I kind of keep it kind of like an umbilical cord in some sense, uh, just kind of with my plants as, as memories. But I finished by decorating the window with the little clingy things that either Dollar Tree or grocery stores sell. And then what we're going to be doing is trying to reorganize the items that I had on my windowsill. It's been kind of overcrowded and I don't have a lot of counter space. I mean, I have counter space. There's probably some kitchens that have less than I do, but my counters tend to get cluttered pretty quickly and my windowsill as well. So I wanted to kind of streamline things, put things away, get rid of stuff and really just have things on either side. And then I have our little like cement planters that I don't know, maybe I'll grow some more plants in. then we're going to move on to the food. So I have some sourdough bread. I made cinnamon raisin and then regular just white sourdough sandwich bread. And I wanted to start using it up. I didn't want it to go bad because it's homemade. It doesn't have like preservatives and all that stuff. So I didn't want to waste a lot of this bread. So I decided I would go ahead and make the kids and myself some grilled cheeses in the styles that we like. And then I was going to freeze the remaining bread um, just to kind of make it last until we get back. And then I also had some heavy whipping cream that definitely was, you know, getting towards the end of its life in my fridge. So I thought I would try a cute little recipe that I saw online. We had an apple that needed to be eaten. So I used my little like French fry cutter thing. I got an inexpensive one off of Amazon. It's probably smaller than some other ones. As you can see, I had a little hard time in the middle of the apple where it gets a little bit, you know, too tall for my cutter, but it really doesn't matter. I cut this up in little french fries and then what I'm making with the heavy whipping cream is like a fun little dip to go with the apples. So what I saw online was, you know, you whip up heavy whipping cream, you add strawberries, honey, and some vanilla, but instead I wanted to use up some of the like strawberry preserves we had in our fridge. The texture of it actually kind of became a little too grainy and like sugary for me in like a peanut butter and jelly. So I thought, why not just add this already very sweet strawberry substance to the whipped cream and make our dip that way? I thought it turned out fine. We actually made like a lot. I had a lot left over. The kids, oddly enough, did not find it as like delicious as I thought they would have. So I put the rest in the freezer and maybe we'll like enjoy it as some type of ice cream later on. Thank you. 
So we're moving on. I am just meal prepping. We're not actually eating any of this chicken today. I am cutting it up and I'm seasoning it with Juan's favorite seasoning, lemon pepper. And then I'm cubing up some chicken breasts and I'm going to be using up some of my sourdough discard and putting salt and pepper and stuff like that. When you fry those up with the sourdough discard on them, it creates like a nice crispy coating and it's like you don't really need extra breading. You just kind of use the discard card and I love it. I make it with my mom's sweet and sour recipe and then I did have a lot of discards so I ended up using it to make some like meatballs or like smashed meatball patty things for Juan to eat on this evening. So I put like a pound of ground beef, salt, pepper, garlic powder, and some Italian seasoning and then I'm just mixing it all up with a I put a little too much to be honest, but like it's supposed to be like two heaping tablespoons of sourdough discard and I'm just mixing it all up and then putting in little balls on my frying pan and cooking these until they are cooked through. Now for me, I have found that when I try to cook meatballs like just on the stove, they never really, I, I have a hard time like rotating them, getting them all cooked, getting them to the way that Juan will like. So I've learned, you know, after this little batch, I had to make more and it's just better to smash them, make like little patties so that they are how Juan prefers. But I've also had success when I just make them in the oven as meatballs. And, you know, for a set, I forget exactly how long I cook it for, probably like 30 to 40 minutes or something like that. And, you know, they get cooked through and then they're more meatball-y <laughs> instead of these patties. But we're moving back to laundry. We gotta, you know, change out that load and dry these clothes. My hope, I think, was to fold these before we leave so that I come home and don't have any laundry to worry about. I can just worry about throwing in our dirty clothes from vacation into the washer, doing a load, and being done with it. And you can really see I'm hopping all over the place. I'm really trying to get it all done before we leave for vacation. And I just had a couple more 4th of July decorations that I wanted to put up. I have since purchased a few more things and I will be featuring those decorations in another video. But I love this little Let Freedom Ring sign that we got from, I think, at home or the home store or something like that last year, actually on the 4th of July when it was all like discounted. So I love how it like contrasts with our blue door and, and our blue door adds that blue to the red, white, and blue. And then Juan loves his gnomes, so we have this one little decoration that I wanted to put up in our kitchen. But I'm finishing off the night by starting that load of dishes that we had started loading up earlier in the afternoon. And I'm also going to be just kind of making a little list, mental notes of what needs to get done the following day before we leave for our trip. I'd like to thank FamiSim for sponsoring this portion of today's video and sending us this two-in-one sound machine and nightlight. This machine comes with 34 programmed soothing sounds and a customizable nightlight that can change through a variety of colors. The diameter of this machine is about three and a half inches and it's about two inches tall. So it's nice and compact and tiny and easy to pack away even if you're going on a flight. When fully charged, it can play for over 15 hours and even has a setting where you can choose for the night light to be on for 30 minutes, 60 minutes, or an hour and a half, or you can have it on all night. Some of the sounds that it includes are brown noise, pink noise, which is my favorite, fan sounds, nature sounds, lullabies, and even fetal heart and shushing sounds 
that are specifically designed for babies. In the past, when we have gone on vacation or taken naps at some other location other than our home, we would typically sacrifice one of our phones and pull up YouTube and play some water sounds on that. But that plan comes with a downside of not having your phone when you might want to. You finally have a break and you want to have your phone, but your baby's using it for a sound machine. So I was really excited that we would have this sound machine on our upcoming vacation so that I could have my phone while Jack takes his nap in the afternoon. This machine worked great for us on our family vacation and really provided a homey feel to my son Jack on our vacation when we were away from home. Again, I'd like to thank FamiSim for sponsoring this portion of today's video and sending us this amazing product. If this is something that you would like to purchase, I will go ahead and put their Amazon link down below in the description box for your convenience. So before I forget, I am just putting our sound machine with our luggage. Everything's kind of just getting piled up on the kitchen island. And then I also made sure to pack some little drink tools. These are kitty caps on the left. And then a product that I featured on my channel a long time ago on the right. These just help modify cups so that the kids can drink through them better without worrying about like too many spills and they don't take up a lot of space so that's why I decided to pack these rather than like sippy cups or anything like that on our trip and then I'm also making sure to bring some monkey locks they hook on to doors and then they make it you know hard for the kids to actually open up and I could lower it so that Aubrey can get out but not Jack so I made sure to set those aside and not forget them when I was packing so now it is the next day. I made sure to bring the kids to the park. And since Jack was like already wearing his sleeper and I knew he wasn't going to wear it like on the trip, it was already getting dirty. I figured just bring him to the park with it. It'll be one less outfit to wash. And we had our snacks and like lunch at the park. Again, eating up things that were going to go bad. Then I figured keep the house clean. Let's give the kids a bath before we leave on vacation. Get them nice and washed up. And while they were taking their bath, it was a good time for me to go ahead and clean the bathroom. Instead of just, you know, sitting on my phone or scrolling away, I do try to be in the restroom when Jack at least is taking a bath, just for safety purposes. I think, I feel comfortable at least leaving Aubrey in the bath alone. You know, she's old enough where I'm not so worried about her, but with Jack and Aubrey in the bath, I have to have to be nearby for my own sake. After cleaning the bathroom and taking a bath, it was time for Jack to take a nap. And then I sat down with Aubrey to download some extra movies and shows onto our iPad so that the kids could have something to watch on the flights or any long drives on our vacation. We are now moving on to like our last little meal before we leave on vacation. Again, I had like some mango I wanted to cut up and I had some salsa that was going to, you know, go bad in our fridge. So I used up like one can and opened up a new one that will last longer. But I decided to go ahead and make beef taco skillet because I also had tortillas that I didn't want to go bad. And I'm really just trying to like make sure we waste as little as possible. If this recipe catches your eye, I do have a recipe video for it, so I'll link that up above as well. This is one of my favorite meals, and it is so easy to make. But this time, I tried a little new twist on it. I actually turned them into a burrito because I was thinking, hey, let's make a burrito for me and then for Juan, and we can take that in the car as we're driving away. I ended up eating mine at home, but it was like a meal on the go, and it used up an extra tortilla. And then speaking of using things up, I had some romaine lettuce that I wanted to use up. It was sitting in our fridge for a while and I thought the chickens could benefit from having a little food toy to play with. And then also, you know, as extra food so that while we're gone, hopefully they won't run out of food. So I'm thankful we didn't have anyone come and check on the chickens during our trip and they all had enough food still when we got home and, you know, all the chickens were alive. 
But we're just finishing up by, you know, vacuuming up some messes, doing a load of dishes so I can come home to them being clean and not like five days of crusty dishes that are dirty (laughs) in the dishwasher and loading up our car and leaving. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here, I would love it if you stick around and subscribe. I will be again highlighting our vacation in a future video. I have an awesome like cake tutorial video coming up and much more. So I hope to see you guys there. to the end of the video. If you didn't know already, every Monday and Friday you can find motherhood and lifestyle content on this channel. And since us moms have to do it all, that may mean yummy recipes, easy DIYs, mom hacks, cleaning and organization, or just a combo of everything. Please know that you are loved and you are made for greatness and I will catch you in the next one.